Hey guys, Jay Siemens here. Welcome to my new series, The Complete Guide to Ice Fishing. It has been a banner year for fishing license sales and I know a lot of people are gonna be getting into ice fishing this winter. I got a 10 part series coming your way brought to you by Travel Manitoba, teaching you everything you need to know to get on the ice. In this chapter, we're going over ice fishing electronics. This is where your inner nerd can come out. But before you get caught up in all the different options in the different price ranges, what you need to realize is any electronics, even if you can buy a used graph for a hundred bucks, it is gonna be a huge step up from ice fishing without a graph. Ice fishing, it can be pretty daunting if you're just sitting on a pail and jigging and not knowing what's beneath you. Electronics do a couple different things. They tell you how deep it is. They tell you the bottom composition. They can tell you a fisher there. They can tell you a fisher interacting with your lure and their mood. There's so much you can learn from ice fishing electronics. And you know, if you've got a shack, you've got an auger, I would highly recommend investing in one of these options. So we're gonna start at the cheaper end of the spectrum. All right, option number one is a sonar ball. There's obviously a couple different options. These are about $200 and you know, they're pretty neat. For the features you get for 200 bucks, it's, it's pretty great. So let's just go over some of the pros of this and I'll talk about what it does. So first off, you link this to your phone, to your tablet, and this is your screen. So you can use it uh, a 2D or conventional sonar screen. You can see the history or you can set it up like a flasher, a flasher being an instant return, kind of that circular dial if you guys have watched some ice fishing videos before. Um, so those are all great factors. The portability, just to have this as an extra flasher, keep it in your pocket, keep it in your glove box just in case. But there are some downsides to this. We know how phones and tablets die in cold weather. That can be an issue because instantly, you know, you're done. Secondly, this is a rechargeable battery. So if it dies in the middle of the day, well, you're, you won't be able to charge it while you're fishing with it. So you know what? There's a lot of good applications for this. And for 200 bucks, I really don't think you can get wrong if you're trying to get into the game. All right, next, this is the standard. This is the staple. This is the classic. This is your conventional flasher. This little dial here, we'll insert a little bit of footage of, you know, catching some fish with the flasher. I'm gonna start by turning it on. Some flashers have auto settings. This VEX is an auto setting. So it'll find the bottom and set the best range. So that's 15 foot range. So right now it's a 15 foot range. See how there's all those little dots? That's one, two, three, four, all the way up to 15. All those bigger dots are five foot increments. So five, 10, 15. So it's on the 15 foot range. Right there, the color starts at about, about the 13 foot mark. So that's bottom right there. This is gain, this is your sensitivity. I'm gonna drop my jig down, you're gonna see it drop down on the flasher here. See that? There's my jig, it's three feet down right now. Let it keep going. I mean, for a lot of the fishing, a lot of ice fishing, you're kind of fishing in those bottom couple feet. Not everything, but definitely for a lot of it. So, the harder the signal, the different color. So green's a light signal. Uh, that pinkish is a hard signal and then it goes red orange so pink is the hardest and then it goes red orange green and now when I lift my rod you'll see the jig go up so basically right now you can see there's no fish if you see something separate off the bottom that's often what happens is you'll see that line lift off the bottom come up to my lure oh look at that look at that fish under me see that mark he's looking at me based on what I've seen mood wise probably a perch but Looks good. Suspended off bottom. We eat some perch, but typically the perch are a little, a little tighter to the bottom. So I'm gonna stop it just above them. Look at this fish. He's chasing, oh boy, Darcy. Oh, mm. oh, giant, just lost a giant. He's coming back so hot, oh, holy smokes. I'm nervous. Oh, big, big giant. Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh, <laughs> look at that fish. They're all big. They're all big, golden, perfect. It is so fun to watch. This is your real time. There's no delay. When you see your jig going up and down, you see a fish coming up, that is exactly what you're seeing down beneath. A lot of these are approximately a three color spectrum. Uh, they might have more colors by now, but you know, you see approximately three colors, one color being the hardest signal, and then a medium, and then a soft. So when you see that big red mark in, that's a red, that's a fish coming in, looking at your lure, and there's nothing better 
and seeing a fish come eat your jig. This one, you're looking at $300 up to $800 depending on what model you have, but a couple pros of a flasher. It's durable. This thing is built for cold. It doesn't slow down. It can take abuse. It fits in a pail. It's fantastic. It's got some of the best target separation and best uh, response time. Some of the downsides of it is, you know, you don't have a GPS like some of the other models I'm gonna talk about yet. But yeah, it's, it doesn't have as much functionality open water as well. You can mount it on a boat, but obviously a graph has a lot more functionality in the summertime. All right, the next one we're gonna mention, this is your conventional 2D sonar. Uh, I don't actually own one myself. I've used them, they are fantastic. There's a bunch of different brands that have them. I've fished with them before and... There's a fish, there's a fish. Can you turn the camera towards me? Oh, he's coming up. I own two of those. We both have a fish? Okay, that's okay. We are marking two fish. Here we go. Oh, oh, get the big camera. Get the big camera. This is way bigger than I thought. Oh, oh, oh. Guys, look. At this hog! <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Look at that fish! That is what we came for right there! You know, you're, you're spending probably $500 to $600 for a portable kit. And the biggest, biggest advantage of this is it's a great all around unit. I don't think there's a better unit for that price point all season long. Five to $600 you mount on your boat. You can, if you have, uh, you know, a graph that has auto charting feature, that, that means creating a map as you drive. The cool thing is you can go drive a lake in the summertime and the fall time, create a map, come back in the winter, and you can have a map for ice fishing that someone has maybe never seen before because there's so many uncharted lakes out there, right? Um, some of the downsides of, of those units, maybe not the same response time as a flasher, but they still do the job. Having the mapping is just absolutely phenomenal. They do draw a little more battery, so you will need a bigger battery. Once again, I'm gonna talk about batteries at the end of this, but you might have to bulk up your battery a little bit to last you longer. We've gone through the three cheaper options and now we are going off the charts from $800 up to $2,600, $3,000, I don't know, it depends on the unit you're using, but this is your LiveScope kit. LiveScope is technology from Garmin and essentially the transducer allows you to see real time wherever you spin the transducer, you have a 110 degree angle that you're seeing which is kind of tough to understand until you've seen it, but anyone who's fished with someone that has been around technology like this, and I, I know Garmin isn't the only one that has it, um, their mind is typically blown. Yeah, right there. See those? About 80 feet in front of the boat, and there's three fish there. So I've gotten lots of questions asked about how I have my transducer mounted for my live scope. It is right on the corner here. I'm casting, yeah, 40 feet in front of the boat. First cast. <laughs> Ridiculous. All right, hook is out. That is a beautiful little fall laker for you guys. Number one, I think a big application for something like ice fishing is the fact that you can drill one hole, put the transducer down, and you can see potentially 100 feet you know, in any direction, which can mean drilling a lot less holes. If you're dealing with fish like crappies, something that tends to school up, it can be one spin of the deucer and you can see the school. All that being said, I haven't fished with a live scope more than a couple hours. I just rigged this kit up. We're gonna have a video dropping of what's going on here to see what's all included. But I mean, I've kind of talked about the pros, but I mean, the biggest pro of this technology is cutting edge. I guess the one other pro you could say is this is also something that I took off my boat. It's got year round use and it's, you know, obviously very deadly on a boat as well. But here's the con. Look how big this is. This is like a medium sized child in my arms. I, I don't know how it's gonna take the abuse. It's something that I would never wanna put in the back of my snowmobile. It is huge. It draws an immense amount of battery power and you know, it just puts me on edge thinking about driving around the ice with this thing. Am I gonna take it out? Yes, but is it scary? Is it super expensive? Absolutely. I think you can still catch so many fish with your flash or with your 2D sonar if you live and eat and sleep and breathe ice fishing. This might be the option for you. You don't need it but maybe, just maybe, you wanna play with it. I'm gonna be doing some videos with this, so I'll have more of a chance to use this on the ice. So we've gone through our sonar options, and now this is another question that I've gotten a lot. Should I get an underwater camera first, or a flasher, sonar, live scope, et cetera? And this is a pretty good question, and this, you really need to cater to the type of fishing you do. So if you're the guy that has a permanent shack on a super clear lake, and you're not gonna move it around much, you got a flat screen TV on the side, you know what, I would probably get an aqua view. I'd probably get an underwater camera. Before we talk anymore, let's take a second to insert some crazy underwater footage. What, what? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he come hot. Like he come real hot. You're gonna catch this fish, but. No, if you catch him, 
Oh wow. Yeah, just hold it still. Hold it still. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that is Keep wild. Look, I just smoked the camera. <laughs> we're, we're trying to watch a trout eat and another trout, I swear, almost ate the camera. All right, right there, that's probably the biggest pro of getting an aqua view. Being able to capture those underwater shots and see a fish's mood and activity, it's, it's fun and you learn so much and from a, you know, from a videographer standpoint and from a content creator, I love being able to have underwater strikes and I know that you guys like watching fish eat underwater. So that's a pro, you know, for video making, it's amazing. You can drop this down and you can tell what species it is. All these other electronics here don't tell you what the species is. As far as cost goes, a smaller one, one of these micro ones can fit in your pocket. You're looking at like $300. One of these, depending on the size, you're looking at $600 to $800, somewhere in that range. It's, it's really tough to say. If you fish dirty water, well then I would just, you know, your first purchase should be a flasher. If you fish specifically clear water and you're spending a lot of time, let's say a little more stationary in a permanent shack, you know, this might be good for you. There's applications for both. If I had to pick just one for a beginner and they're getting their first, I think for most people, you know, a sonar or a flasher should probably be their first purchase. But I will tell you that some of my greatest memories ice fishing have been staring at this camera. The close call seeing lake trout and crappies come up to your lure, it's, it's tough to beat that moment. So just keep that in mind. All right, before we end this chapter on electronics, I wanna talk about batteries. Lithium batteries have become such a big topic of discussion. These things are twice the power and half the weight. So for something like this, it would not be really attainable to run this all day with a lead acid battery. This thing would be just stupid heavy. Even a flasher, you swap it out to a lithium battery on the back and it feels completely different picking it up. That's the difference between needing to charge it, you know, every two to three days and charging it once a week. You're looking at about $100 for a lithium battery like this and uh, I think it's a good investment if you do a lot of ice fishing. That is it for our electronics chapter. Guys, remember there's lots of personal preference. There's lots of brands out there. If you don't have any of these, getting any one of these will help you so much on the ice this winter. Next chapter, we're working on rods and reels to get you started on the ice.